The stuff that I'm going to show you sells constantly, and I do mean constantly for us, gives us a huge amount of profit, almost no cost into it. And on top of that, I have about a zero ratio for returns on this stuff. It's easy to photograph. It's easy to store. Every aspect of what I'm going to show you is super easy for us. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to show you some of the items that we sell that most people, most of you out there watching this, won't think much of. Now, most people will bypass this stuff. They'll be looking for clothing and all of these other things. The stuff that I'm going to show you sells constantly, and I do mean constantly for us, gives us a huge amount of profit, almost no cost into it. And on top of that, I have about a zero ratio for returns on this stuff. It's easy to photograph. It's easy to store. Every aspect of what I'm going to show you is super easy for us. Most people, as I said as well, will walk right by this stuff. So the first item here, I talk about fairly regularly, these sorts of things. These are from Italy. They're resin. They're plastic, basically. I even find these mixed in with toys quite often, earlier toys and stuff. But they go to a Christmas manger scene. I've got most of the set here. I got $62 shipped out of this lot here. I got like two bucks into the entire thing here. It's something most people just think looks ugly or cheap. Some of them are marked Italy. Some of them have marks on the bottom. Fantanini, I believe, is how it's pronounced. But there's other companies that made these, too. You want the legit ones, the real ones. You want this brand. They sell extremely well. If I have one up for Christmas, I always sell it. I don't think any of these sit in my inventory for very long at all. Maybe 30 days at best. This was just listed not too long ago this season, and it's already out the door. Now, here's an interesting set of 10 cards. It's a musical set, but it's selling corsets. It's got 10 different performers on them. Now, I had a bunch of these, and I split them up into several sets. Now, this first set, and let's show you the back of this one real quick first. Somebody came in with an offer. I think it was around 50 bucks, and I countered at 70 told him it was just listed, and this is the best I can do. And he ended up buying it for 70 bucks plus shipping. I got almost nothing into this. It's a tiny little stack of little tiny paper cards, smaller than baseball cards. Nothing special. It's a unique set, though. It's a whole bunch that you just wouldn't find normally for the exact same business from like a series, a set of cards. Now, we also sell a lot from fairs, festivals, and things like that, World's Fair. Now, this is from the St. Louis Expo from the 1880s, and it sold for $25. Now, for those of you in Patreon, you know how I price things. 3X on this one, right where I expected to be. Had some room to play around in the whole works with this one as well, too. So very happy with that sale on this one as well. It's just a tiny piece of paper, easy to store, easy to photograph. Most people wouldn't think much of it, but I get as much as people get for common clothing that you go out there and source, and I don't have any of that aggravation with it whatsoever. So if you sell a $25 t-shirt, chances are you included free shipping. So you're already three, four dollars down. You had to source it. You paid several bucks for it on top of it. And there could be something wrong with it. You could get a return. Could hit you somewhere down the line as well. With this item, I have less than a dollar into it. No issues. Send it out quick. Storage quick. Scan. So I don't even have to photo or set anything up. I just drop it into a duplex scanner. Now, records I sell all the time. If you know the oddball, the bizarre, the different ones, they sell extremely well. Utopians, it's a soul, northern soul would be the, the correct term on this one. I took 50 bucks on this one plus shipping. Now, this is a white label, WL for white label, and it's a promo. Audition promo, it's the same basic principle. These were sent to DJs at record stations to play before the release of the actual uh, 45 here. 50 bucks, very happy with that. Here's another one I've had up for a little while, and I sold it for 160 so I'm happy with 160 It's one of those dollar pickups. It's an oddball one. It came with a sleeve that had typed information stapled or taped to the back of it. It's a AOR, album-oriented rock. 
Um, it's more like a garage, heavy metal 80s hair band style of music. You may be able to hear this one on YouTube if you hunt around. I played it, and I actually took a copy of both sides for myself. I do like this sort of thing. I grew up with friends who were in bands, um, and I used to go to their performances and things like that, heavy metal and things like that. Here's another one. This is a Paith Christmas one. This is Holiday Christmas Star of Bethlehem, and Noel's on the other side. Now, Turner Row, the performer on here, isn't very popular. Popular, but it's a Christmas one and it's the right type of the year the right time it's an excellent condition so condition wise I do great on these 50 cent purchase um, a lot of people don't mess with the 78s especially the Christmas or religious ones but I always sell those as long as you get the right ones and you know how to market them what's the correct wording correct category and the correct site to list them on now, brochures I sell constantly. A dollar or less, I pick them up. Sometimes I can pick them up for a nickel, buying like 50, 60 of them all together. A lot of those can go for some decent money. Now, this has been up for a little while. I took 1750 I believe, plus shipping on this one here. Uh, it's Sarasota. I've been there. It's a nice area. It's something interesting. I have pennies into this. Again, I bought it with a big lot of stuff. Here's a vintage spider pin, um, Czechoslovakian. It's marked in there. This was sold to somebody who's a subscriber. Thank you very kindly. I didn't ask to shout your name, so I'm not going to do that. But it's something I've had around. We have quite a few of these animal-related ones. The wife kept a couple as well. This is just one of the extra ones. Now, this has a little chain on it. I'm assuming it might have went to like a set where there would be the mother spider and then a baby or a couple of them, kind of like the poodle pins you run into. I'm fine with that. Um, dollar maybe into it or somewhere in that range. Now, labels I sell constantly. I don't think these days um, a day doesn't go by where I haven't sold several labels constantly on these sorts of things. Now, I buy them in big bulk. Sometimes I can buy a packet of these because most people just look at this and don't see much. Well, that's a label you'd stick in a box. Who's going to want that? I hear that kind of stuff all the time, but obviously somebody wants it. They spent $34.50 to buy it, plus shipping. So they got about 40 bucks with tax into this item. I got like a nickel a quarter into it with a whole bunch of other stuff. Now let's stay on labels for a minute here. This is a roller skating label. Now this one I took $25 for. Now I talked in another video, and I'll have a link right up here, about not accepting offers right away. I had several offers I actually turned down on this piece. I just let it run, and it, sure enough, I got $10 more than the last offers, the last two offers I got in this. So if you hold your guns on some of these items, you're going to sell them for more money if it's a good item, if you've got it keyworded, SEO, and the whole works in the title. Just another one. This one did sell for $34.50 as well. Location is everything. you got to put where this stuff comes from. If there's a name on the building, a name of the owner, those go in there. So you want city location, state, and owner or business name in the title every time on stuff like this. That's how I got $34.50 for it. Someone knew the rainbow roller skating rink. So boom, off it went. $34.50, 50 cents into this one here. Here's another one. I believe we got $34 or somewhere in that range on this one also. We sell them all the time at full price. You've got to have Jackson, Mississippi. You've got to have Star Skating Rink in the title. So whatever you do, you've got to have that information. Having the date is key as well, too. So people know right off the bat that it's a vintage. People will redo these sometimes, or they'll be from a later establishment with a similar name. And one last label to show you here. Now, this one, I missed a term that I should have probably put in the title. I should have listed bank note in there, and I probably would have sold this one a little sooner. With shipping I got 40 bucks out of this label so either way I'm okay anything describing or advertising printing ink or ink for ink pens and things like that are great fountain pen ink as well the bottles and things like that the bottles we sell the labels we sell advertising stickers labels poster stamps we sell uh, print ads anything tied to the ink printer material in general sells extremely well for us Gold-filled items I buy all the time as well. Here's a perfect example. This is a very nice piece, honestly. Uh, I sold it for 40 bucks plus shipping to somebody. We went back and forth on price and such forth. It's been up for a little while. I'm fine with that. I bought a bunch of these, a bag of these at an auction, probably 
maybe a year, year and a half ago. And I've sold pieces out of there since that time. We've probably 10 x our investment in it already before this sale. So this is all profit as well. It's not in perfect condition. It has some wear. It can be buffed and made to look like uh, almost brand new in these sorts of things. It's a very nice piece. It opens up as well. Any of these lockets, charms like this for a dollar or two, if it's gold filled and old enough, this is probably circa 1920s or so. I buy it because I'm always going to sell it. Now, I don't mind holding on to something that I paid a dollar or two for for a year or two to get 40 bucks back. I've got nothing in a listing. It Once it's up, it's up. All my labor is done. So all it has to do is sell. Who cares if it sits there? I made 40 bucks out of something that a lot of people would have never listed or thought it had any value, partially because it's worn in the back. You can see the finish off. It's not real gold, nothing in it, no chain or anything like that. It's a small charm. It's nothing very big at all but it sells for us routinely now here's an interesting piece it's from elk point dakota territory anything from territories goes for some good money uh, indian territory washington or any of these other uh territories that became a state all that stuff is good stuff and sells for some good money i do believe we took 40 bucks on this card here just because of the location and name of the druggist on this it's just a paper card again i have almost nothing into it it's probably been paid for 10 20 times over as well so again Put it up, list it, and then forget about it. 40 bucks out of something most people would never assume carried that kind of money. Most people list this paper stuff, call it junk, and list it for 5 or 10 bucks if they even list it. So for us, I list it all. It's easy to list. I can list like 45 of this sort of item in an hour with no problem whatsoever. Scanning-wise, in a minute, I can scan like 20 cards or better with the duplex scanner that we have. Now, for those in Patreon, this last item, I've been going in a little bit into depth. We've been talking about values. You've seen some sales. This button right here is from Chicago Rolling Chair Company. It was an attraction at the 1893 Chicago World's Fair. Uh, someone would sit in a chair and attendants would push them around and a track around the uh, fair itself. It was an attraction like you would see the Wedway People Mover at the uh, 1964 World's Fair. Disney incorporated that into the park. It was made by Disney Wedway, uh, Walter Elias Disney. That's where that came from. It's kind of like that, basically. And I'm sure that's where Disney got the idea to some extent. This button here sold for $172, and it's just a shirt button. Now, this isn't the biggest sale I had on one of these. This week alone, we sold five buttons, all identical to the exact same person, for a total of $750 for those five tiny shirt buttons. In Patreon, you can see those sales, as I said before. This is a key area. Most people don't think a thing about a little bag of buttons, one button sitting on a table or in a display case. I can pretty much guarantee you most people would walk right by this. And even those who might be curious on it probably aren't going to know what it is to be able to sell it in the first place, at least to get the good money out of it, to know what this thing should sell for. We priced this higher than the last two that sold, and this one went for more than those. So again, if you price them cheaper, you're going to sell them cheaper. If you only price something at 10 bucks, you're only going to get 10 bucks out of it. In many cases, I priced it high. I got $172 plus they paid three, four dollars shipping on it. Now, knowledge is power. I say it all the time. Knowing what this button is again, this is another shirt button, just like the other one. Uh, it sold for $95. It was up for an hour. Uh, I took the offer. I'm fine. It went to England. The gentleman had to include 14 something in uh, shipping charges as well. This is from a Caius Boat Club, Goonville and Caius College. I think this might even be tied to Harvard or something, but it's a very, very early button. Um, it can be tied exactly to that organization through diligent uh, research on my behalf. Most people wouldn't have a clue. You might run into other organizations. The key to this is not just the bird in the center, but the CBC is all uh, that I really needed to distinguish what this was. The rest of the information is used. The Latin text, I believe it is around the outside, is used on dozens and dozens of things. Knowing the type of thing, this is boat club. BC is usually boat club. I was able to uh, correctly ID it, list it, 
I got like five minutes total into research, list time, photoing, and everything into this button. Five whole minutes into this, and it sold for 95 bucks. So this is just an example of some of the odd and bizarre things that we sell. Some historical junk that most people would think isn't going to garner any type of value. But for us, it brings us in a ton of money. This has been our busiest month on record ever in the history of our whole business. This month right here, 2020, December, just before Christmas. And it's doing nothing but still going up from this point. So if you get the right items, you have them correctly identified, well photographed, well scanned, whatever you need to display those items, they can still sell for some good money, regardless of what's going on. One good reason why I don't mess with clothing anymore or any of that kind of stuff because it has dips and dives. This stuff sells all year round no matter what. And the higher the price it is, the easier I usually can sell these sorts of things. $1,000 items sell amazingly well right this very second. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified whenever we post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.